Hey guys, Brad here, and we are live. This is our first live video that we've ever done on Hammer and Home, and we're pretty stoked to be doing it. Um, we've just recently reached 3,000 subscribers, so that's a huge monument for us. Uh, it's, it's been a lot of work over the last year, and uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. We've got a lot of things planned for the future, and some cool shows coming up, and uh, more tool reviews as always partnering up with some big suppliers. So uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty excited about the, the coming years. Um, today we're gonna be doing a review, not really a review, I should say, more of a, a how-to video on these foam inserts for the DeWalt T-Stack. So it's a T-Stack insert tutorial live. Um, we're gonna be putting it into this T-Stack right here. And this one is the uh, DWST1-71215. So that's what we're going to be putting it into. And we're going to be mounting or inserting, I should say, my cordless 20 volt router here. And then we're going to also put in this dust collector for the router, which we just got. And I'll be doing a review on this as well. Never used it, so I'm pretty stoked to do a review on this probably this weekend and uh, check it out. So, you know, keep checking back to, to find the review on this guy if you're interested. Um, the foam, if you guys are interested in the uh, code on that, that's DWST172364. And the router is DCW600. And again, that's the 20 volt max. And we did, a, we did a review on this as well um, a while back. Such a great router to have. And yeah, I'm just, I haven't put it through the paces too much, but I really, really do like it. Plowing out uh, plywood or OSB for windows works really, really well. Um, with the dust collection though, I'm pretty stoked to kind of see how, how well this works and, and take it up a level. Um, yeah, what else, Tiff? Tiff? Tiffany, my wife, is on the camera, so um, she'll be operating everything from behind the scenes. And yeah, why don't you come up and say hello? It's my Hi, wife. Everyone. This is my wife, Tiffany. <laughs> uh, we just actually got married this year, so we're we're newlyweds, and we've got this little uh, venture together. So it's it's pretty exciting. But yeah, any questions yet? No, no questions yet, but I'll be bringing them in as okay. soon as we get any questions on the live chat. So if you're out there and you have no idea what Brad's doing, ask a question so we yeah. can help you figure it out because this video is all about being a tutorial. Yep. So I'll go back to monitoring those. Go monitor, babe. I'm on the camera. Okay. So yeah, we're just going to probably get into it. Uh, we don't want to make this video an hour long or anything, but... Um, I'm just gonna kind of go over how I do these foam inserts. I've I've done a few of them. Uh, I'm getting into them a little bit more for my tools. I I've been flip flopping between like having them stored in my trailer in little cubby holes to sort of having them in T stacks where I can just sort of grab and go as I need. So now I don't really keep anything in my trailer at all. It's just uh, depending on the job because. Lately, things have been changing so much with, uh, well, the world. So I'm just adapting to that. And part of that is my tool management and how I sort of speed up my process of, of you know, grabbing what tools I need for that day as opposed to hauling a big trailer around and wasting gas and, and really just having all that equipment there when I really just need, like, a couple tea stacks. So... I've sort of set things up a little differently that way and uh, I'm liking it a lot just being more mobile with the T-Stacks. Um, I drive a big truck so when you're doing you know jobs in in areas in town where there's maybe not a lot of parking um, it's nice just to be mobile with the T-Stacks as opposed to pulling like a 16-foot trailer or something like that because that can always be a bit of a hassle trying to get in alleys and you know um, just parking and then lunchtime, what do you do? Do you keep the trailer with you? Do you lock up? So yeah, right now I'm going full T-Stack um, and sustainer. I do have a bunch of Festool. So as you can see, 
down there. That's one of my sustainers. So probably not in camera view, but uh, you've probably seen it in other videos, the sustainers in the background and stuff. So. I just want to let you know Scorched Earth is tuning in. Hey, Scorched Earth. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. One of my uh, longtime followers. He's always got good questions for me or comments. Right on, man. Glad to see you here. So yeah, we're just going to cut this. I'm not going to say that I'm going to do it perfect. Um, I haven't done it for the router yet, so it's going to be a first. And basically what I'll do is I'll just trace it out with a felt. And um, to, to cut, I've got a couple different knives. We're going to use a really skinny uh, blade. It's the AB. And then I'll use the, uh, the Olfa. I um, can't remember what millimeter this is. I want to say 25 mil. But um, yeah, so just these two blades to do the cutting. And I'm also going to show you how to maybe cut with a little soldering iron. It's plugged in right now. So once I press this down, it'll heat up. Uh, I've seen some guys on YouTube sort of cut with hot knives, which is really the best way to, to cut um, your foam. If you're doing lots of foam, I would say definitely buy a hot knife because that just looks like, you know, the cat's A to... Uh, to cutting but we're, we'll give it a try with this see how it goes um, I'm not super stoked on cutting with these because you're essentially melting foam which is super toxic um, so it's really just I'm just gonna cut a little bit because I don't want to breathe that stuff in and I'm not gonna mask up today and all that um, that's sort of the plan here when I talk for more than like five or ten minutes and I'm just rambling um, especially when I'm live, you know, when we're, when we're, uh, shooting, we can cut and edit. I can take drinks of water. I can pause and screw up, but right now it's live. So it's a little different. And, uh, yeah, so I might say some things that are totally wrong. And then you guys, I hope you, you know, make some comments and catch me on it. But, uh, yeah. Do we have a comment? Uh, Scorched Earth just is, uh, tuning in and, uh, you might want to let people know that while I'm close up on you, I won't be able to get back in the comments. Right. So, yeah, once we're done here, once Tiffany kind of comes in on the close-up of what I'm doing and, and my, my handy work here, um, we'll get back to those questions when she gets back to the monitor and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think let's get to it. Um, we're going to start off by tracing the tool. Actually, no, we're not. <laughs> Edit, cut. No, we're going to uh, put the foam in the tea stack first. I like doing that because it just kind of holds it together, keeps it rigid, and I just get a better feeling for, you know, how it's going to place in the box. Um, and I'm really hoping this is going to work out well. I might have to go a little deeper uh, because the router itself isn't super shallow because of this plate. So, you know, I've got some room. I'm just going to grab a tape measure here. So like the plate itself is four and a quarter inches and the box is like just over six, but there's a bunch of stuff on the inside here. So I definitely have, you know, three and three quarters. So I think I should be fine. I just got to make sure that I keep it sort of low. That way the plate is kind of coming in this area of the box and uh, and I should be good. Another thing I was thinking about earlier when I was going to do this is um, make sure that your router isn't like in some random spot before you do this, right? It could be just there and then when you when we cut it out to go, to go here, you've always got to have it back in the same spot. So the easiest thing is I'm just zeroing it right out to to the main base here, keeping it as compact as possible. And then, uh, yeah, we'll stick it in like that. So this is a DeWalt foam insert that you can buy online. And we've got all the links down below guys. Um, so if you're wanting to get them online, no problem. And yeah, basically you just slide them in. Okay, and they fit really nice. You know, they, they're definitely using some kind of 
hot knife or press or something like that to build these because they are super snug as you can see okay and then there's also all they're sort of configured with all these little square cubes and so i try and stay within those cubes as much as possible just because i found if you cut one of the cubes in half eventually they kind of flick out and then you have to you know glue in some more foam or screw around with it so I try and stay within the cubes and I'm not looking for like a, a super duper tight fit. Um, I know I'm just not going to get that because I'm not using hot knives. I really, when I'm doing this, I'm just banging them out and I don't really want to waste a ton of time because if I spent so much time, you know, investing in my tools and, you know, making sure everything is perfectly tight, I, I would just wouldn't have a life. So, you know, I gotta draw the line somewhere. So it's it'll be as good as it's gonna be. We'll just put it that way, all right? So just get yourself a felt, a Sharpie, whatever, and uh, kind of position it where you want. Now, I don't wanna get too close to the side because I do wanna leave some foam in there. So I'm just gonna pull it over a bit to this next line of cubes, and I'm gonna utilize the bottom line of cubes. I think that's, I think that's where I wanna go. And so when you're cutting, you also, you want to cut on the inside of the line because once you've cut it, you can't go back. All right. So we'll cut it a bit on the small side first and then we'll, you know, work our way bigger and bigger until, until it fits properly. Now saying that hopefully I, I do, uh, I do just that and I don't <laughs> cut it too, You got seven too people tuning in, babe. Seven people. Cool. Right on. Well, thanks for tuning in guys. This is our first live. If you're listening and, uh, yeah, we're pretty stoked. As I was saying earlier, we have 3000 subs, so we're, we're pretty amped up about that. But yeah, we're just doing a T-stack sort of, uh, how to, how to cut some foam out for your router here. Um, I was letting this slam around in one of my larger T stacks that I've been using, uh, one of the, uh, what model is it? We'll get you to zoom in on this, Tiffany. It's the, um, rolling cart one. This guy here. So I've been using this model right here. If you can see that, that's the DWST one seven eight zero or eight two zero and so i use that just sort of like my daily chuck a bunch of cordless tools in there what i'm going to be using for cordless tools and i just didn't really want my router banging around in there too much because i i've been keeping like a couple drills um a skill saw a uh right angle drill my power planer and something else i'm losing it oh a jigsaw and uh, yeah, I just thought, oh, I don't want my router banging around in there too much. So I'm gonna make its own case. Plus I'm gonna stick some bits in here because I don't use the router that much lately. So yeah, it needs its own case. It's, it's too special to, to be banging around. So there we go. There's the outline guys, all right? So now we're gonna cut it out, pull all these blocks out, try and fit it, see how it goes. Actually, just as I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm, I'm almost having a thought <laughs> if I should have put it this way. Mm. Mm -hmm. See, when you do it live, you don't have second chances, but which way are you going to do it? Good question. What does what does everyone think I should do? Oh boy, I gotta go back to chat. See if there's any rope. Guys, what way should I do it? Should I point it down? <laughs> Everyone's radio silent. Oh, come on. Okay. Nobody's commenting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I've kind of committed with the drawing, and. I think I'm going to stick with my guns here. Yeah. 
Sorry guys, you didn't pipe up soon enough. I'm just gonna go for it. All right. So I like to use the little knives just because you can you can turn them easier. Um, especially when you're first starting out, you kind of want to follow this profile here. If I use a larger knife, which is typically what I'm using on like longer straight cuts, um, you know, you can't you can't turn these radiuses as well. So yeah, let's just give this guy a go. And you want to have a really nice sharp blade. And just work that line. Oh boy says point it down. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not sure. Point it down? Yeah. The camera or, or the knife? <laughs> I don't know. Well, oh, the, the router. Hmm. The router pointed down. Well, poor boy, I've committed. <laughs> we'll see. I can always glue them back. You know, I've, I've done that before where um, I had a, uh, I'm sure you've seen it in one of my videos, my multi-tool. I just glued some pieces back in there just because I wanted to make little compartments and stuff. And it, it worked great. So, you know, if this doesn't work, I can, I can play with it some more. And Scorched Earth says he bought the DCS 39B circular six and a half inch saw the other day. Oh, nice. That saw, let's see, is that here? What was the, what was the code? And then he says, it's too, I don't know what that means. You know what that means? Oh. Here, that's what he says. Don't know. 391B? Ah, this one right here. Scorched Earth. Good saw. Yeah, this is my go-to saw. I love this saw. Um, we're live, so we can do whatever we want. This, this saw here that I did a review on earlier. This saw, I don't know. Something's going on with this where this one is the... Uh, DCS 570. I love this saw because of the rafter hook. Well, uh, Scorched Earth says go the other way and can cut a battery out too. That's true. I could do that. Oh, I think we're just on a big time delay. With yeah, we're on a time delay, guys. Yeah. But yeah, good goodbye, Scorched. Um, this is uh, a great saw to... Oh. <laughs> to... <laughs> Circular saw. You're right. It's dangerous in here. It's dangerous in here. Yeah, I mean, I could always chuck a battery in there. That's the other thing too, right? Am I gonna... I usually don't um, put my batteries in with my tools. I live in Calgary, Alberta. And when I used to keep my batteries with my tools, I would forget them. And then they would freeze overnight and then they're toast. Like I've got four batteries right here that I froze, you know? five amp hours they don't they don't work they don't hold the charge i got a flex full brand new froze it last winter so that's why i'm carrying like a battery box like this guys so yeah i don't think i'll put a battery in here maybe i'll cut some space for it but but that's about it that's my reason at least let's just keep going on this i'm gonna get distracted and so yeah, I'm just cutting on the inside of the line again. Eh. Oh, Scorched says his computer is giving him issues for responding. <laughs> yeah. And he said sorry too. Does that mean he's Canadian? <laughs> yeah, probably. I don't know. All right, did I do it all? I kept getting distracted here. So yeah, I've cut it all out. So now, you just kind of dig your fingers in and you pluck these cubes out. Okay, that's what they look like. But if you cut it right, the whole thing, yeah, just got a little corner here. Get 
the whole thing should just come right out, just like that. Boom. Boom. D Mackle, D M A C L one two three wants to know if you're gonna buy the new Tough System two point oh. Ooh, good question. Yeah, I, I'm drooling over that two point oh, the way it uh, it clicks in. Like, I wish T Stack would just, I don't know, upgrade somehow. It's just, I'm really finding the clips on the side are kind of annoying sometimes. But that 2.0 system is pretty sweet. I would love it if they could take the 2.0 and they could put a lid on their 2.0s or some sort of adapter where you could clip in your T-Stacks. That would be sweet. Um, will they do that? Probably no, because they're probably built in different factories or something. So who knows? But uh, yeah, I might have to. They, they're nice. I love the screw storage they all clip in on the sides i think that is a sweet system right now i'm using the clear lid t-stacks for my screws and i really find that uh i can't hold enough so i think there's only like nine compartments on the top and they're they're big right so i like to carry a small screw box that uh, i can carry like little tiny screws because I, I do a lot of finishing work but i also do exterior stuff so I just like to have a box that has everything in it but it's not a t-stack and so it's kind of annoying because when I'm carrying my cart around it slips and I gotta almost carry it separately so yeah that 2.0 is uh pretty sweet I think I'll probably get at least the rolling cart and maybe one little tower for sort of my everyday kind of stuff so we'll see anyhow I ramble. Um, there we go. It's super tight fit, guys. Like that's that's not gonna fall out. But let's see if the lid will close. Not quite. So I gotta carve the bottom out a little to to allow this to cut or to to fit. And I just gotta figure out what's sticking past. So right here, this sticks out a little bit more. So I'm just gonna cut a little groove in the bottom to accept this kind of bottom section. So the, the way these are made is like, there's a, I don't know, I'd say about an inch or three quarters of an inch of foam on the bottom that doesn't have these squares. And then this top part, <clears throat> which is inch and five eighths thick, this is all these squares, okay? So, Oh, can I say something? Yeah. Uh, Scorched Earth just said a bungee cord is the universal adapter. <laughs> You're very true, man. Very true. Yeah. Got lots of bungees. But I, I just like to have it all clipped together. I don't know. I'm a little obsessive compulsive about that. And I would love to just see it all clipped together. I love how the sustainers clip together from Festool. I love how um, the Milwaukee packout system works. That is such a, a sweet connecting system. The, the packout compared to T-Stack, you can't even compare it really. Um, even, even the 2.0 is hard pressed to be as good as the Milwaukee. But I really like the drawer units. Like back here behind me, all these drawer units are amazing they're so good right you got the thin ones it's just some electrical stuff that i have and then my whisk snips for metal work but these drawer units are just so good um it's hard to compete with that so yeah nobody makes i guess the perfect system is is my point I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers here. So yeah, I got big fingers, so I need to pull this out with some pliers. Now 
There we go. All right, I'm winning. Cool. Let's try it out again. Boom. Closes. Deadly. <laughs> All right. So that worked out live. Could have been bad, right? I totally could have just screwed it up and it not worked and I should have flipped it around like you guys said and whatever, but I had already committed with my pen. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm gonna make this a little wider on the side just because you can see it's kind of folding in those pieces. So I'm just gonna take from here out. it's good I like it okay so there's the router it's set next we're gonna do the uh, the little dust collector and like I was saying earlier guys I'm gonna do a review on this I just got it in the mail today from Amazon um, it fits on the base it just screws right on and this will work for the 20 volt and the corded model so You've got the corded model. It says it'll work for both. D Mackle 123, I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. He asked, do you ever use a foam inside inside the lid? Oh. No, I haven't. Um good question. I think if you I have to think about that. They don't make one, so you'd have to customize it yourself. You know, you could just buy some foam. And then uh, I would probably suggest loading this up with spray foam and then pushing it in there so it, it glues in. Um, that, that way you could really get it attached. And then, yeah, you could carve some stuff in there. The only thing is, is that this lid, this is the max it opens, right? So if your tools would really have to be in there quite well and you might want to use like those super mini bungees to hold stuff in, and then you also run into the risk of whatever's up here encroaching on whatever's down here. So for me, I, I don't know, it's probably almost too much work because um, it's just not designed for that with all this compartments and this ridging and stuff. And thus also these lids, they're not as rigid as, um, as the uh, 2.0s and stuff like that or, or just the other the larger system. So yeah, I don't know, give it a try. If, if that's something you're into, you know, if, if it applies to whatever you're doing, sure. Try it out. You could maybe even just load it with spray foam and then shave it all off with a big, with a big saw, like a, a big hand saw. And then you could maybe cut out in there areas. I don't know, something to play with, but yeah. All right, guys, I'm now going to install the dust collector. And I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with all this extra space. There is the plunge base, which I might get one day, or maybe even get a second router and put it here. I'd probably do it opposed, so the, the base plate would be up here. That way I can fit it tight. Because sometimes when you're doing routering, it's nice if you've got a couple different bits and changing the bits is always a pain so before i was cordless i i was into uh, the bosch routers and i got a couple of those little uh, bullets or whatever they're called jets bullets can't remember the name it's where this one it's right here the colts yeah funny how everything's just right where i need it right but um yeah so i've got a few of these which are great but telling you once you cut that cord it's like i haven't used this for years um yeah and then when i'm doing a lot of routering and i'm getting into the really fancy stuff i'm using my festool routers and uh that's just something that i kind of keep for special things or when i'm doing a lot of production or or whatever but my day-to-day -day 
Ruttering is, is now this guy. Uh, he just seems to do the trick. So I think I'm going to keep the middle really open because I just, I don't know what I'm going to do. If I'm going to get another router, if I'm going to get a plunge router base, or if I'm just going to load this up with bits, I'm not sure. But yeah, let's, for now, I think I'm going to stick this right in the corner here. So it's kind of out of the way. I think that's my plan. So we will draw this out. Again, I'm just going to use a little knife. Got 11 people tuning in. Cool. Thanks for tuning in, guys. It's our first live, so we're pretty happy to be doing this. We just figured it out last night. And I think we're going to start doing lives every Friday. Uh, Tiffany and I have been talking about it, and um, for all my regular viewers out there, we're uh, we're going to be putting out a lot more content this year. Um, we're doing a big renovation, so that show is going to be coming along. We we filmed another reno we did, um, so that's just sort of in the can for editing, and uh, yeah, so we're we're pretty excited about the year ahead here. Let's see how that fits. Yeah, not bad, holds it in there nice and snug. Let's see if it closes. Nope. So I'm gonna hit in a couple areas there. So it looks like, see these little ridges? Just gotta avoid this corner here. So if I just rotate it over, And it works. Cool. And if it becomes a problem, I can always, I can lower it too, right? I can get it a lot lower, take out the next piece on the bottom there. And actually, I think I might. Because I've got like a quarter inch gap under here. And take it down all the way. Oh yeah, and before I do that, I'm going to show you guys um, how to cut with with this. This is the uh, I don't know. It's just a really, really old soldering gun. I don't even use it anymore because I have the, the new little Dremel. But this one here, you got to hold the trigger down. And uh, yeah, you can cut areas out. So I'm just gonna switch hands. Let's say how to cut a circle. We're gonna try and cut a circle with this. I've never really done this. I just sort of watched some videos, guys using hot knives. I thought, yeah, you know, I could slap a bit on the end here and see if it works. So we're smoking. So it's starting to burn off some of the old solder. Almost there. So we'll just heat this up. The only thing is when you're using these, I'm burning foam, so it's gonna be kind of smelly and toxic, which uh, I was saying earlier, I don't really wanna breathe that stuff in. So this is more just to show you that you can do it. And you could probably customize your own, you know, end here, just use a piece of copper. You can make it longer, so you could probably cut into things. Something to think about. It's definitely uh, very effortless. Just melts right through it. Just see what the finished product's like, though. I have a feeling it's going to be kind of like gnarly, not as clean as a knife. It's also going to be hot. Oh, 
scorched earth has an idea for a show. Let's hear it. He says, cut a door with a track saw without taking the door off. It's magic. That's true. That is true. Question is, what track saw do I use? <laughs> My DeWalt, Festool, or Makita? Um, I would like to try with all of them, to be honest. The, uh, the Festool has really amazing clamps. Um, these guys right here. And they slide into the bottom of the track. So yeah, this would be probably my number one track to use. The DeWalt is compatible with the Festool track. I can't remember if the Makita is. I haven't actually even used that yet. Just a buddy of mine's borrowing it. So um, yeah, we'll do that. When we, when we do this reno coming up, we'll, um, we'll cut one down. And if we don't have one to do it, we'll, uh, we'll just mock it up, try it out. And always open to great ideas like that. Yeah. If you guys got ideas, things you want to see or hear, uh, I'll, I'll try and make it happen, honestly. Um, I'm doing this not just for, our, for us, but, you know, to help educate guys out there that just don't know how to do things and maybe are new to the trade or whatever. I've, I've been doing this 18 years and uh, I, I like to teach. Um, also people who totally know how to do it but might want to see how someone else does it. Yeah, I mean, I find myself watching YouTube videos all the time of guys doing stuff that I know how to do but I just want to see how they do it. And it's like this weird addiction. I, I don't know. I can't explain it. I'm sure you guys can relate. So yeah, oh, we're... so you're going back to the knife? Going back to the little knife here. Yeah, that, um, that little cutting it with, with the heat gun, or sorry, with the uh, soldering gun, it, makes it really rough on the edges here because it's burning it, right? It's just, it's melting it. And I'm going to say, don't try it. It's not worth it. A knife is all you need. A knife, some needle nose pliers, felt marker. Hey, ask viewers if the audio is okay because I've been pressing up on this wire. Yeah, guys, can you, can you let Tiffany know if the audio is good? We don't have any way of uh, hearing it. Usually... We do our videos and then we edit. So just give her a thumbs up if the audio's all right, if you wouldn't mind. I just realized I was totally pressing up again. <clears throat> all right. So now that's better. Fits a little deeper now. And it's in there. It's super in there. Yeah, there we go. Dynamite. All right. As you can see, I already made my label. Just use a little label maker for that. And then <clears throat> big reason why I love these foam inserts is for the router bits. You don't have to do any cutting or anything. You can put them wherever you want. You can move them around. It doesn't matter. So where should we put these? Up in the corner here? Right here? To, this is my one eighth round over and you just put them in the corners and they just fit right in in the corners of like anywhere I could put one here okay I could put one over here pull it out closes up it's all good so that's my 1 16th and these seem to be some really common bits that I've been using um, and Maybe we should add a couple more. Got the router bit collection here. I just did a video on this. If you guys want to check that out, it's got all my bits. Um, but yeah, what else should we put in here? Flush cut, right? That's a good bit to have. Um, Probably a rabbit bit. Another great bit. This one though, I need my bearings, which means I need to bring my bearing box with me, which is fine, I guess. Probably keep it over here. 
See, now I'm starting to divide my bits. I don't like doing that. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's probably good for now. Oh, I know. This pilot bit here. It's still going. Oh, it's still going? Okay. It's still going. We've got some loud neighbors outside, so we're going to tell them to quiet. They're uh, doing a roof next door. All right. So there we go. Just some simple bits. That'll keep me going for now. And as I need them, I'll probably load them up. And who knows, maybe half of this will end up in here. Um, hard to say. But these, these bits are pretty sweet to have. Tiffany's giving those guys some, some words. <laughs> okay. So that's my router bit set up. And then next, I think we're going to do a video on uh, just using this router too, just different ways of, of routering, how to use it. Uh, maybe some templates, things like that. Um, I don't know, I'll, I'll do some brainstorming, kind of figure out what I want to do for some router videos. I am super stoked to, to show off the Festool routers. Um, I've got the laminate trimmer router, as well as the, uh, what model is that? The 14, yeah, the 14 EQ, 1400 EQ, uh, really good router. And yeah, I've got the, um, the sh adjustable shelf jig for that so that's a whole festool kit um and i've actually come to think of it i'm going to show you seeing how we're talking about foam inserts i'll show you what i did with my festool insert and then we'll probably wrap it up here did you finish something while i was out of the room <laughs> i just added some some bits there yeah but it i'm going to show the guys scorched, the... scorched earth says great job bro oh right on thanks man so yeah, I'm gonna show them the festival. Just stay that way and they'll... All right, so here is a sustainer, okay? And number one, sustainers are crazy expensive. I think this is like 20 or 30 bucks on Amazon. And this here, I think it's like a hundred bucks. I don't know. It's just way too expensive, but I bought the tool. It came with it. So it is what it is. But I took a DeWalt um, foam insert and I took the guts out of the sustainer and the sustainer, they come with these like plastic molded. You can see the picture here. It's like this plastic molded, um, you know, area for your router to go. The problem is, is that you got to take it all apart and it's just, it was a pain in my butt. I didn't like it. Things kind of clanged around a bunch. So I always use this router in a certain fashion. And this router here is a, if you're not familiar with it, it's for doing like flush trimming. Okay. Now you can use this on a bunch of different things and we'll get into that with another video, but dialing this in with this bit because the bit is is chamfered in here i'm just this bit here is chamfered okay it's on an angle and then your bearing and this are at a 90 degrees to each other so you got to get this plate in the perfect spot as well as you got to get this bearing in the perfect spot and it takes it takes some serious time to adjust that at least i found it has so when you've got it adjusted you can't put it back in its plastic mold and you got to take it all apart and so let's say you're you know you're on a job and you don't want to leave your tools on site overnight um you got to take it all apart put it away properly and then in the morning you gotta come back load it all up unload it at site and then you know set it all up again and then you're looking at i don't know maybe 10 minutes to set it up maybe longer depending on how sleepy you are or whatever so um i just like made this little foamy thing so it's always set up now granted if i'm driving around a lot and it's banging around yeah i'm gonna check it but at least 
it's set up and I've got a really good chance that it's going to be the same as I left it yesterday. So I just switched over and these foam inserts, I mean, they don't fit perfectly in the Festool sustainers, but it's good enough. And, you know, everything is where it needs to be. It's all in here nice and solid. You know, got Allen key holder and the collet holder and dust collecting holder. So, yeah, it's just, it just works. So that's why I really like the T-Stack system and, and the foamies and all that good stuff. Um, they're just, you can't go wrong, right? If, you, if you're into this kind of thing, you can't beat it. So what do you think, Tiff? I think it's great. You know me, I'm a tool novice. Tool novice, not a tool holic. But uh, yeah, I think that probably wraps up our, our little live stream video. Uh, leave some comments down below, guys. Let me know how, how I did. This is our first time. I'm sure I'll get better over time. I'm rambling on a bunch here, start showing you everything I own, and uh, I kind of get off topic. It's all good. It's all educational, right? Just here to teach and and uh, have discussions with you guys and, and kind of just share knowledge. Um, it's all cool. So yeah, I guess. Oh, wait, before we oh. go, Marshall Richmond says he wishes he had a work area like yours. <laughs> well, just don't look behind Tiffany because it's like a crazy area. This is the little corner of my shop. And uh, I am fortunate, like I said, I've been doing this a long time and been collecting tools a really long time as you can see you know all my dual tools up on the wall here and tea stacks everywhere um marshall says my stuff is on the floor <laughs> yeah it, if i'm not careful my stuff will end up there too it's and and the washing machine and dryer oh okay yeah no i'm not allowed to put tools there anymore i i, I feel yeah for sure yeah um Tools got to stay outside, not allowed inside anymore. So, yeah, it's, uh, I guess I'm lucky to have this little corner and, well, this whole shop, really. Um, I really, really enjoy, you know, working in here, especially with this, this table. It's pretty sweet. As you can see, we got two of them. So I'll be doing tool reviews on that uh, this year as well. Hey, uh, Scratched yep. Earth just wanted to let us know that T-Stack is on sale at Canadian Tire. Oh. And, um... Here in Calgary? He, well, uh, I don't know where he is. Scorched Earth, are you... What city are you in, if you want to say? Um, and he says, as far as I know, it is compatible with Stanley, DeWalt, and Husky. Is oh, yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. So I think you're talking about Craftsman, um, the red and black. But uh, yeah, Craftsman, even Lowe's here is selling Craftsman. And they are fully compatible. They're never on sale from what I've seen. But yeah, if they're on sale at Crappy Tire, I should go take a look. Um, it's just, it's hard to go to the red. You know, I got all the yellow and black. It all matches. But uh yeah, I could use some more drawer units for sure. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. So we're going to wrap this up. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Um, my sign off oh, is... Wait, oh. before we go, Scorched Earth is revealing that he's in Ontario. Okay. And uh, he kind of does a, uh, a little... A little green and happy face there. Oh, yeah, man. Stay safe. Aww. We're all we're all staying safe. That's why my shop looks good because I've been home. You know. Yeah. Um, work is a lot different. You got a new comment? What's your table? This is the uh, MFT table. This is from Fest Tool, and it is an amazing table. It's all aluminum with a. MDF top, which has these bench dog holes. It's what we call them or what we used to call them, but it essentially allows you to, let's say this is wood. It allows you to clamp things down, okay? So clamp that down and then you can work on it. And then you can easily just pull these out. These tables are crazy expensive. 
Um, Scorched Earth says, why did you drill the holes? But you just explained that they came with it. Yeah, yeah, they come with it. So check out Festool. Uh, check out their website or, or some of the YouTube things out there or, or just stay tuned because I will be doing a full um, review on this. And the way this works, this works with track saws. It's specifically designed for their track saw. Just <laughs> hang on a tick. Scorched Earth is in real time. He's saying, never mind, you answered the question. He also says, great show. Thanks, Scorched Earth. Thanks. I'm going to take a little credit for that. Just, just, yeah. Just a teeny bit. Thanks, buddy. Just a teeny bit. But yeah. And is... then he says, okay, bro, makes sense. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they this table works with, with these track saw um, tracks. And I'll do a whole video how this connects, but essentially... You know, it's kind of mounted on like this and then it flips down and there's positive stops that you put on the other side. So you can use it as a production table. Um, you can buy the table with the, with the track for like, I think it was 12 or 1300 bucks Canadian, or you can just buy the table without, which is, is less, it's like a thousand bucks or 800 bucks or something. I don't know. Um, but what it allows you to do is some serious finishing. Like this thing, just imagine if you're building kitchen cabinets and you don't have a panel saw and you wanna do a bunch of cross cutting. So what I do, I have the uh, saw stop, the five horse saw stop, and I do all my ripping with that. And then I'll take my, my wood and I'll put it on this table and I will cross cut. And you can set up all these positive stops so you can do like your side gables, your bottoms, your tops, whatever you need, and you can just mass produce this stuff. But besides cutting, you know, you can mount things to this. Um, there's all kinds of tools that you can mount on the side because there's these T-tracks down on the sides here. I think Tiffany's gonna kind of turn down, but yeah, down here, you see that? So there's these T-tracks and you can mount different things to it. So. If you're into on-site finishing, you gotta get yourself one of these. You gotta get into Festool because it will speed up your productivity so much and you'll just get super dialed in. You'll be able to do, um, you know, adjustable shelving and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you'll have your router with you always, you know, it's just, it's just such a great system. So I could go on for hours, guys. Um, this was really just about the, this one little thing and, and we'll do another one. Like I said, I think we're gonna do this every Friday and um, and I'll definitely be putting out a, a really long video on this MFT table and how to set it up and how to sort of, you know, um, run it basically. So. And Marshall says good night from Corona. All right, good night Marshall. Thanks for tuning in guys, appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you probably next Friday. And uh, yeah, Three make sure you. Yeah, three videos a week. We might be upping it to five, <laughs> which is ambitious, but we're thinking about it. Yeah. And um, yeah, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notify bell, all that good stuff. Until next time, keep on crushing it. We'll catch you later.